Hey there everybody, it's Mark Crowley. I'm back with another How to Draw video. Today we're going to be learning how to draw Rufy, or Luffy, depending on how you want to pronounce it, the main character from the incredibly popular manga and anime series One Piece, created by Eiichiro Oda. Now, people like to know the size that I'm working at, so I put these two boxes in place. Each one of them is uh, three inches on all sides. That works out to around seven and a half centimeters. Well, let's not waste any more time. Let's go ahead and get into drawing the basic guidelines of the head. So you see it's basically a circle up here. Don't worry about perfection in this area. That's going to get erased later on anyway. But the line starts to wave over here, sort of representing the cheekbone. And then note that the uh, chin does not come to a sharp point as it does in some manga illustration styles. Well, I'm going to refocus the camera so we can get into drawing the details of the face. Now, happily, the eyes of this character are uh, among the easiest to draw out of the entire manga industry. It really consists of just one line for the upper eyelid, one for the lower eyelid, and then a nice big black dot for the irises. Note, though, the placement of the iris is a little closer to the bridge of the nose than it is to the outside. Let's go ahead now and draw the nose. So the nose really does come to a bit of a point right here, and uh, unlike in many manga styles, there is an indication of just the nostril here, one little dot set off to one side. Well, I'm going to go ahead and draw the mouth, and I've decided to give him a big, toothy, open-mouthed smile. So it's kind of a triangular-ish shape, I'd call it. A little curved on all the different sides. And notice the width of it, almost as wide as the eyes uh, themselves. He really is. That's one of his traits as a character, has a great big giant mouth. And I am going to draw teeth later on, but for now let's go ahead and draw the ears. So the ears are quite low on the head by the standards of human anatomy. Of course, this is a cartoony style. We're not trying to be realistic in anatomical terms. But notice that the bottom of this ear actually comes real close to that initial uh, guideline that we put down back at the beginning of the video. I think it's time now, though, to refocus the camera so that we can draw his big straw hat. So for now, it consists of a large oval and a semicircle up here. Now, some of you may be thinking, boy, I can't draw an oval that's perfect. Well, you, there's no need to, really, because it's a straw hat, and this line is going to end up having a kind of a wavy line to it anyway. You do want to sort of try to get this to touch here as a guideline, and then touch over here. That'll ensure that you're getting it the right size, at least. And uh, it is quite a large uh, hat, I noticed, in most of the uh, illustrations that I studied. Well, let's get one more line uh, that's sort of the, the lower line that crosses crosses uh, at the top of his head. So notice the placement of this line pretty close to uh, the top of his head here. And uh, at this point, we can go ahead and erase this initial guideline. Be gone, line. We will not be needing your services anymore. And at this stage, it's time to refocus the camera. There's plenty more details with the hat and the hair and so forth, but I'm going to save that for the uh, real-time part of the video. For now, let's go ahead and get into drawing uh, the basic guidelines of his neck and shoulders. So his neck is pretty thin from one side to the other. This line starting at the tip of his chin, the other line starting uh, at the bottom of his earlobe. I've noticed actually a variety of different manga characters have that same uh, placement. In any case, you'll see a little slope, a very gradual slope to the uh, shoulders coming down and a curving roundness to the, uh, uh, I guess the biceps, this would be up here, uh, and uh, coming down into the rest of the arm. I think it is time though to uh, get in some additional lines for, well, let's get uh, his vest into place. So here we have the lines for his vest. I asked my uh, followers on Twitter and Facebook, um, should I draw him with a uh, vest or with uh, sleeves? And um, everybody seemed to agree. Well, most of the people seem to want me to draw him with this vest. And so that's what I've done. And uh, there will indeed be more details for the vest and uh, sort of his chest muscles and so forth. But for now, let's uh, move the uh, camera focus up to his face again. And I'm going to go into real-time drawing uh, to finish off all the details. Details. Okay, so I've erased the basic guidelines that were there at the beginning, and I think the first thing to do is to uh, work on the facial details, in particular his eyebrows. And I'm going to give him these, uh, what I call, angry eyebrows, but when you combine them with uh, uh, a smile, they tend to have a, you know, a slightly sassy or mischievous look. And I think that certainly fits with uh, 
Luffy's character. I do feel like, regardless of the pronunciation I choose, Luffy or Luffy, one way or the other, there will be comments of people saying, you're saying it wrong. Uh, in any case, uh, notice the placement with the eyebrows fairly close uh, to the eyes themselves, although you want to maintain a distance between them. And now it's time to draw his trademark scar, which, uh, you know, really, as with, with almost all the different parts of this, de uh, this uh, design, is quite simple. And, um, and for me, it's kind of fun, in a way, to do a video that uh, is based more on simplicity. I do a lot of videos that are pretty involved, you know, lots of details and so forth. And so this is a nice one. just consists of one curving line and then two uh, vertical lines that uh, create the, the effect of this scar. Now let's go ahead and draw the teeth. I'm going to start with uh, this big white band that forms his uh, upper teeth. Not delineating any of the separate individual teeth, although I suppose that happens uh, at certain points uh, in the series. And then just a hint down here at the bottom of the lower uh, teeth. Really going mostly along this edge of my triangular-ish <laughs> shape. And then over here, I'm going to just make one big uh, tongue, you know, one big area for the tongue back here. And happily, that kind of finishes off the details of the face. It's time to start drawing the hair. Now, I noticed as I studied different um, illustrations, um, both from the manga and from the anime, that uh, the hair tended to be coming, you know, down out of the hat uh, in the area of the forehead in most of the drawings that I looked at. And so uh, I'm going to do that, which is to say I'm not going to have strands coming up like this. Uh, it's all going to be uh, coming down out of the uh, top of the hat. And uh, my feeling is that there is vaguely a, a certain number of strands, big sort of letter V-shaped strands, or I guess this would be a W <laughs> here. Um, but it's not one of these characters where you have to get it absolutely perfect every time. I think you have certain, you know, you can give yourself some freedom to uh, let the strands of hair wave around a little. You know, I should say a little bit about One Piece. It is the number one most uh, successful. Uh, not just manga series, but I think comic book series maybe of all time. I, I read somewhere that uh, the Guinness Book of World Records had awarded uh, Eiichiro Oda status as the, you know, for the single creator with a single comic, longest running. It's gone on. They've collected it into like 80 volumes. <laughs> They've had 727 anime episodes. That just blows my mind. Anyway, enough about that. I should probably talk about this super zigzaggy line here over uh, really uh, going straight from the hat down to the uh, ears. And then uh, I guess I'll, while I'm over here, I'll go ahead and uh, do some of these uh, strands of hair that are curving outward, not quite reaching the brim of the hat. But I'm going to put two strands right here, and then I'm going to get just a little a hint of his hair at the back of the neck. All of this to be colored in jet black later on at the end of the video. Now over here is where I saw the, you know, the uh, in some drawings, these strands of hair getting a little more uh, curvy and uh, breaking the contour of, of the hat a little, maybe coming a little closer to the brim of the hat. And I think you could play around with having some of the strands go in a different direction. I mean, uh, his hair... Uh, he doesn't look like he's <laughs> going to a stylist or anything. It's just going, uh, it has a mind of its own, and it's going off in lots of different directions, which is nice for you as an artist. You don't have to sit there with this painstaking attitude. You can kind of wing it and make it up as you go. Now that I've got that in place, it's time to dash in some of the details of the hat. Now, there is a red uh, brim to the hat, which kind of loosely echoes this curving line here. I'm just going to drop that in. And again, different illustrations that I looked at had different ideas about how to render the straw surface, but at least a few of them seem to consist of like one, two, three lines, kind of one, two, you know, sort of alternating 
longer near the rim of the hat or the brim of the hat and then uh, getting tapering off as the, it goes closer. Maybe not covering the entire area but just sort of little hints of it uh, here and there to maintain that sense of the uh, straw-like uh, texture. And then later on I'm going to be inking all of this. But uh, for now, let's uh, switch the direction at the top of the hat and have the sort of weave of the straw going uh, more vertical in that area. Again, something that I noticed as I studied illustrations of the character. Well, I think we've finished that. I'm going to just erase here at the back. Oh, you know what we have not done? And that is the interior of his ears. So let's, let's make sure we get that. And it consists, I would say, basically of two lines. This one coming down off of the ear lobe. A little bit fanciful. Uh, it relates somewhat to um, human anatomy, but it, it is sort of a, you know, a playful design. If you study actual ears, <laughs> human ears, uh, the lines do not quite uh, separate this way. But anyway, if you get one here uh, at the top and this one sort of interlocking with it, uh, and sometimes there's a third line right there, but that, uh, uh, no doubt, it's a fairly complex arrangement of lines. Um, in any case, it is now time to uh, shift the focus of the camera down so that we can draw the rest of his vest uh, and his chest muscles. Okay, well, I'm going to try to keep things moving. You know, a lot of my videos go for 20, 30 minutes. I really would love for this one to be shorter. I think there just needs to be more of a variety in the length of times of my videos. Some of them should be closer to 10 or 15 minutes. Let's see if we can do that today. I'm adding a little wrinkle here to uh, uh, convey the cloth of his uh, vest. Uh, you could have this line extending up here. That also will help to convey the cloth. Of course, you'd want to break the contour of the shoulder um, so that the uh, vest is coming outside of that line. And then uh, I think we have space for really just two uh, buttons, which will later be colored yellow, the vest, of course, being red. I'm going to have this line extend past the uh, shoulder and then come over here behind the neck. I'm going to go ahead and erase away a little bit here so as to uh, kind of do like I did over there and uh, uh, finish off the, the wrinkle. I don't think, again, you don't have to get carried away with realism here. Uh, it's a stylized character and uh, you would almost never see the cloth uh, drawn in a way that resembles actual real cloth. That's just not the style of this series. And down here, I think what we can do is have this extend past the um, side of his uh, chest or rib cage, and then erase away here so as, again, to separate out the um, cloth from his body to differentiate those two. And the last thing we have to do is to draw his uh, collarbone and uh, chest muscles. Collarbone in, in lots of different uh, manga styles and even non-manga styles that very often consists of two lines um, both of which are, you know, sort of exaggerating what we tend to see in real life. I guess it depends on, this, uh, on the person. Some people have very, very visible collarbones. Other people not so much. Uh, but I'm going to make one line that comes right down here, not exactly in the middle because he is sort of facing away, turning away a little bit. This will be uh, dividing his chest muscles, his pecs, <laughs> He's been pumping iron, yeah. And uh, we're going to go ahead and get two lines here. I'm not going to have these lines connect. Not me. I'm going to let those lines be separate. And maybe get just a, a little bit of um, a suggestion of his... This is the deltoids, right? It's not the biceps. Did I call these biceps earlier? Probably. <laughs> I never know the name for anything. And uh, maybe continuing imagining that that line of the... Um, the pex uh, continues behind there. It's going to come up here and sort of point towards that uh, line of, uh, as I said, I think it's the deltoids. Sounds like a, a rock and roll band. The, ladies and gentlemen, the deltoids! <laughs> okay, enough of my lame dad jokes. It is time to refocus the camera so that I can uh, ink this illustration up. I'm going to do that all in time lapse and then maybe just talk a little bit real time as I uh, begin the process of adding color.
Now, people always want to know the pen that I'm using. It's the Pigma Micron 08, but there's no need to get the exact same pen that I'm using. Any pen that you're comfortable with will do the job. Now, I'm going to do just a very quick uh, real-time bit of coloring to show you that it only requires four colors, basically, to uh, color in this character. Uh, a red uh, for the hair band, and I'm just going to jump down here and show that this same red can be used for the uh, vest that he wears. After that, you need some sort of a yellow. I'm using a, a kind of ochre-ish yellow for the hat, and of course that will uh, go throughout the entire surface of the hat. I think you can also get away with using that for the buttons, although maybe it should be a uh, more of a pure yellow for the buttons, for, the, for your purists out there. Uh, of course, we need some sort of a color uh, for the skin, and that will go throughout all the different uh, surfaces of skin that you see here throughout the drawing. And then if you want to count uh, the inside of the mouth as a separate color, you'll want to use a, uh, I'm using sort of a pink here uh, to color in the tongue. Uh, and then, of course, the uh, the hair and the inside of the mouth are just going to go jet black. Well, uh, that's probably it for uh, the real-time part of the video. I'm going to go ahead and kick it back into time-lapse to finish off the coloring. All right, well, it was looking a little unfinished to me, so I took this gray uh, marker and added a bit of extra shading throughout. Otherwise, though, it is re a remarkably simple color scheme. Please remember that this is number 21 in an ongoing series of fan art videos. I've done how to draw videos on, uh, you know, Goku and L, Kirito, Sebastian, Pikachu, uh, and uh, non-manga characters as well, such as Baymax. Uh, uh, Elsa and others. and uh, You can find a link to that playlist in the uh, info box below this video. But for now, let me go ahead and thank anyone who has supported me by getting any of my books like Brody's Ghost and Miki Falls, my graphic novel series, as well as The Realism Challenge, my book that shows you how to uh, paint hyper-realistic illustrations, and finally, Mastering Manga and Mastering Manga 2, my books on how to draw manga. I am always super, super appreciative of anyone who helps me out by getting any of those books, but let's go ahead and lay down this marker. I want to thank you all for watching this video. I hope you found it helpful, and I'll be back with another one real soon.